Hello and welcome to For the Clarity and Closure of the Viewers' Comments. I'm just going to say a few brief things before we begin. Number one, when you choose to comment on my YouTube channel, there are terms and conditions, there are rules that you must follow. It's my house. I expect you to follow the rules. If you don't, your comment probably will not be published. Also, I ask that you be honorable and graceful, i.e. respectful of everyone here. Please don't go around telling people what they should or shouldn't do. And if you come here making claims, making claims about this or that or the third or something that's happened to you or whatever, having to do with grammar or courts or whatever, you better be able to certify your correct sentence structure knowledge because this is a correct sentence structure channel and I am going to call you to the carpet on it if you start making claims about something that you perhaps don't know what you're talking about. It's very important for the safety of the vessel. If you have closure on correct sentence structure, you should be able to provide that proof like that on the spot. So keep that in mind. The energy you bring here, I will return. I will balance it out with rule one, rule equal. So without further ado, let's get to the comments. Our first comment comes from John Potts, and I'm sharing this comment here in this video rather than on my YouTube channel for several reasons. Right off the bat, I've said this numerous other times, I apologize if I sound like a broken record. Ladies and gentlemen, when you come to this channel and you want to share your thoughts in the comments field, if you've never commented before, and even if you have, when you click your cursor into that little box where you leave your comment, there will be a, a box that will pop up, and it will give you closure on the terms and conditions of the comments field. Meaning, the comments field has contractual rules. If you want to comment, there are rules to follow. One of the rules is do not tell anyone else what they should or shouldn't do because that is a presumption. That is a trespass. That is what the fiction does. If no one asks you to tell them what they should do, then you have no position with which to tell them that. Very simple. Okay? This guy says, I am going to do what Jason Matthew Glass should have done in the correction above. So this is another individual that either A, ignored the rules in terms and conditions of the comments field, or B, doesn't really give two craps about it and just walks around disrespecting, you know, just presuming that they can do whatever they want to anywhere they want to, okay? With voidance of the balance of the honor and the grace. Now, I don't think that John Potts is malicious. Um, I think that they're participating with an erroneous thought that they have closure on the grammar. And I'll show you why I say this. So let's see what he thinks I should have done. Shouldn't have erased the first four. Erasing the four doesn't make the rest of the document an adverb verb document. Okay. What is he talking about? Erasing the first four in this post. I'm going to share the post with you right now. Here's the post. Here is an example of how a lack of closure can throw your entire sentence into a fictitious conveyance of grammar. Two small but critical errors pertaining to positional sequencing. Now, this is a lesson. If you're familiar with my channel, I put these up in the community section every now and then. 
I don't really give you the answer, but I give you hints so that you can learn on your own. So here is what I was looking at. You see? Now I mark in red the errors. And then I syntax it because the two errors literally throw the entire sentence into adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun, fiction, babble. One zero zeroes out, one zero in a multiplication problem zeroes out the whole problem, as Colin David hyphen Wynn Colin Miller has said multiple times. So this is not correct sentence structure. This is adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun, fictitious conveyance of grammar. And I have commandeered the vessel and syntaxed it based upon these two errors. And now I'm going to give you closure on what the errors are. There are two position loading effect phrases in front of the verb in a correct sentence structure because you need two points with which to draw a straight line. For the facts, of the facts, then you can put your verb in. This individual has, for this claim, of this word, and then a colon space criterion. So that's three position loading effect phrases. For this claim, of this word, with the criterion, the mathematical interface is voided because there are three position loading effect phrases in front of the verb not correct sentence structure. Continuing on, you see the word for after the verb. As stated by Colin David Ivo and Colin Miller numerous times in numerous videos, two of which I have reproduced on my channel as well as other multiple videos giving closure to positional sequencing, there is one cause per sentence and one authority. The cause comes at the beginning for this claim. The authority comes at the end by this claim. But yet we have another four after with this basis. That is not correct. That voids the mathematical interface. Thus, it is adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun, fiction, babble. And I have syntaxed it to show this. So I don't know what they're talking about when they say, shouldn't have erased the first four. I didn't erase anything. Nothing has been erased. I don't know if this guy is making stuff up or what. But let's continue on. He says, the parsing corrections using one, two, three, four doesn't apply. Using numerical values, one, two, three, four, that's syntaxing, not parsing says it again. He says adverb verb parsing correction is for adverb verb documents only. Well, first you have to have closure on what correct sentence structure communication parsing syntax grammar is. And I don't think John Potts has closure on that because there are three elements to it. Correct sentence structure communication, parse, and syntax. He's clearly saying parsing here. He says it twice but he's using it as a synonym to mean syntaxing. A lot of people that follow Mark lowercase k think that parsing is syntaxing, but it's not. Parsing is parsing. Syntaxing is syntaxing. One and one is one. You have to know the difference, and this individual clearly does not even know the difference between those two things those two of the three elements of quantum grammar. So that is why I did not publish the comment because they are sharing incorrect knowledge. And I don't even know what they're looking at because I didn't erase any words off the page. I commandeered it because those mistakes, the zero in the multiplication problem in the mathematical interface zeroed out the whole thing it made it adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun, fiction, babble. John Potts. So that is why I'm not publishing your comment. Because you clearly do not have a grasp on what parse is 
or what syntax is. If you would like to obtain closure on that, feel free to contact me at jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com and apply for a workshop. So this is another comment from John Potts, and the reason I'm putting this up here is because at the end here, they say, I sent you an email with a picture depicting the corrections, which, John Potts, I did not receive any email from you. Uh, so please, make sure you spell the email address correctly so that it does get to my inbox. Um, and then maybe you can apply for a workshop so that you can get closure on your grammar and you're not lost in fiction babble here which you clearly appear to be um, with absolutely no closure. You are making corrections to other people in formats that may or may not allow capital letters or underlining. Is that right? Hmm. Well, I don't think I said anything about underlining. What I had, to, what I said was the positional sequencing. The mathematical interface, 1 plus 2 equals 3, 3 minus 2 equals 1, nothing to do with underlining. So again, I'd have no idea what this guy is talking about, and it appears that he doesn't either, but that's my guess. Next comment comes from Colin Spencer. Thank you for your membership, Spencer. And they say, Scuba Steve, diving deep left furled. Lol. All that effort in text and comments. It'd be a lot simpler to email the tutor correct. That is that is correct, Spencer. And this has, you know, this goes for the John Potts fellow before as well. Comments fields, and I've said this, I feel like a broken record. Comments fields are not efficient places for closure, especially when you apparently don't know or have closure on correct sentence structure. So I don't publish comments that are like the one that John Potts said. Now, if John Potts would have, would have prefaced it by saying, Jason, I think you may be wrong, and this is what I think you missed, or something like that, if they would have came on like that and made it like an, like an offer of their perception of what's going on with honor and grace, I would have published the comment. But no. They come on all presumptuous, like, this is what you should have did. No, that is not correct navigation as far as this vessel goes, because this is my vessel. You are a guest here. There are terms and conditions. If you choose not to read the terms and conditions, then you are voiding the honor and grace of this vessel. You are not complying with terms and conditions. It's like someone coming to your house and, for example, you see a plaque by the front door with, and it says, house rules. And you just choose not to look at that at all and walk in the house, take your shirt off, spit on the floor, do whatever you want to. That's exactly what this John Potts did. And uh, that's why his comments were not published. And I'm trying to impress upon people, read the contracts. Make sure you know what it is you're doing before you do it. Things go a lot better. If, if you are with the volition, or participating with the balance of the honor and the grace, if you want to carry yourself with honor and grace, read the contract. Know the terms and conditions of the venues you're navigating through. And again, I don't know where John Potts is from, but my guess would be North America because I've run into a lot of people that have that same type of blustery attitude. Like they know what they know, and that's just the way it is because it is what it is because RJG said so or whatever. And that's why they won't get their uh, comments published here. But they will get their comments uh, viewed uh, in videos like this as a cautionary tale. And uh, hopefully the viewer 
can learn a little bit more, get, gain a little bit more insight on the psychology that is necessary to be successful in using this when under duress uh, in a fiction system venue, perhaps, where you have to actually hold a factual position and have closure on the grammar and actually teach it to someone else being very calm, cool, and collected rather than coming in, oh, this is the way it is, and you should do it this way, and you've got a second grade reading level, and I don't, for the comprehension of your adverb, verb, blah, blah, blah. That may work in the uh, old David Wynn Miller videos, but that doesn't, uh, that doesn't work in today's scenarios, by my perception and by my knowledge. Next comment comes from me, and... I think this was a Kuliana to the John Potts guy. I said, this is a grammar lesson for people to point out the errors. There are two main errors, easily fixable, which I showed you in red. Pretty obvious. Basic, you know, falling just short of spoon feeding, I guess. Remember, this channel is for learning correct grammar. If you offer comments claiming erroneous mechanics, I will not publish them. That's why I didn't publish the John Potts, because they are erroneous Void of correctness mechanics. If you make it clear you are guessing and offer a comment that is erroneous, I will publish it. Like I said, if you come on with humility and say, Jason, I look at it this way. What do you think about this, and that, and the third? Of course I'll publish it and I'll consider it. Uh, but this is a venue for learning correct sentence structure, and I'm here to teach it. I've been teaching it for five plus years, hundreds and hundreds of students all over the earth. Almost, you know, over 500 videos with thousands of hours invested in creating them and publishing them free for everyone to learn from. I mean, I don't know how many subscribers John Potts has or how many videos, grammar videos he's published on his channel or how many successful document contract post of Vesicor venues he's created. Um, but I know what I've done and I know what my certifications are. Next comment comes from psychological sigma and this comment is in relation to if you remember the last clarity and closure of the viewers comments video this individual left a comment on a one minute mason video that i did and they said so to paraphrase didn't the police of olden days have a badge that said slave catcher and then I responded, you know, pretty much like, what does that have to do with this, the topic of this video? Which, again, is in the terms and conditions of the comments field. Stay on topic. <laughs> Don't bring something totally has apropos of nothing into a comments field video about what happened to me on TikTok with Masons. And now this guy's talking about cops and slaves. Why? Why would he feel the need to do that? Or her. I don't know if it's his, him or her. So they said, have you ever heard of asking a question to spark a conversation? Answer, I wasn't really asking. So they're trying to, I guess, explain that the sentence that they left, which was something like, didn't the police of olden day have a badge that said slave catcher? Question mark. So now they're saying, they weren't asking a question, even though it had a question mark at the end. So either they made an error or they are utilizing subterfuge. They're not being straightforward. They're playing word games. Psychological Sigma, this is not the place for word games. I will take you at your face value. I'm not going to sit here and try and read things into it as to Oh, he's not really asking a question. She's not really asking a question. Uh, she's making a statement to try and spark discussion about a topic that no one mentions in the video that you're commenting on. I was pointing out the connection to current authority in the past. The terrible morals of slavery were upheld by the might of the badge. You seriously want to reprimand me? Like, silly boy, just use Google. Don't speak to me on relevant issues in which most people miss. Isn't that what the, the children today call a microaggression, what he just did there or she just did there? Which I did say that. I said, Google's a wonderful tool. 
I typed in Google, uh, police badge says slave catcher, and an article popped up giving some information about that, which I shared the link. And uh, this psychological sigma, I guess, is uh, got a little up in their feelings about it. I feel bad for you, man. I don't believe you, psychological sigma. <laughs> I don't think you feel bad for me. I'm sure you get attacked all the time for being against the norm. Weird you would approach this conversation so arrogant. <laughs> well, I guess that's uh, how you feel about it. That's how you feel about it. The video you commented on had nothing to do with cops or slaves. So I'm not sure what your point is. But thanks for the grist for the mill. Another comment from John Potts. Mistakes happen. Now, I'm not sure, but it sure sounds like uh, someone trying to make excuses for someone else. To use a fiction term, I give the benefit of the doubt as much as I can. If you've watched the video that I did about Stephen Temple, you will see that right up until the bitter end, I left the door open for the guy to exercise some humility and continue on communicating. I left every possible door open until they started getting, by my perception, belligerent. And it's really funny. If you really look close to their conveyances, they are literally plagiarizing me. They're plagiarizing, like sort of like doing the Pee Wee Herman thing. I know you are, but what am I? I know you are, but what am I? Like, it got really goofy. So, yes, mistakes happen. They do happen. But they happen by choice or by nascience. If someone is shown that they're making errors and they're also shown how to correct those errors, but they choose to continue to perpetrate the errors and ignore the corrections, well then, that's not a mistake anymore. That's purposeful nascience, if you want to call it that, or even maliciousness. Humility is critical. Admitting one's errors is paramount rather than blaming everyone else, which, of course, you know, that's what it seems apparently is happening with the, the Stephen Temple guy. It's never his fault. It's everyone else's fault. He doesn't want to take accountability for his own actions. Um, if he makes a mistake, oh, sorry, I'm a student. Sorry, I didn't know any better. I'm a student. You know, don't whack me on the knuckles too hard. Here, you correct the errors. I'm just a student. You're the master, right? <laughs> Next comment comes from Coarvis. And they say, Heil. And then uh, I respond back. I, I, I'm sorry, I don't know how to pronounce that word. Let's find out how to pronounce that word. Hold on a minute here. Kuhuse. Kuhuse. So I said, Kuhuse back. I'm not sure why they said Heil. I really don't. Next comment comes from JC, and they say, it would be great to come together. We could, oh, I don't know, live by the rule one, rule same. Aha. Small side note. Rule one and rule same. I only know one individual who uses that phraseology, and their initials are RJG. And form study groups together and help educate kids, baby sheep, and adults, and bring these solutions forward to stand up to the fiction. What is the answer here? The answer here is maybe consider stop looking for groups or relying on groups or relying on leaders or relying on saviors. Instead, consider learning the grammar for yourself, becoming your own authority, becoming your own leader, obtaining your own commandership of your own construct. Getting closure on the grammar good enough to teach it to someone else. 
And then you can be the seed and form your own group if you want to. It's up to you. But I highly recommend not waiting around for someone else to do it for you or waiting around for a group that you can join because you're probably not going to find it. Frustrating because the same divisiveness from the fiction exists here too. Divisiveness is actually good in this respect because it separates those who are correct from those who are not correct. Like when I see people use certain phraseology, it tells me, it's like flag protocol. It tells me from where they originate, okay? And because I'm so familiar with each of the main sectors of quantum grammar that I don't affiliate with, I know when to be very, very cautious about someone uh, being an interloper or, or something like that, which I'm not saying that about you, JC, at all. I'm not at all. I'm, I understand your sentiment here, um, but I highly recommend taking my suggestion as a tutor into consideration of learning the grammar for yourself so you don't even have to worry about groups or anybody else. You'll be the guy. Nobody else. Next comment comes from Magical Fluid Process, and they say, There are very few who stand so firmly in their own truth, such as you. I think at some point this will translate as increased prevalence, or maybe not, as time and space are functions of one's conceptual scheme and consciousness is the fundamental reality. Then it's really up to you. Thumbs up. Well, thank you very much for that sentiment, Magical Fluid Process. Um, duly noted. Next comment comes from loyal viewer Wyatt Hunter, and they say, You was talking about symbols. Look up Nazi facey. It's a bundle of sticks and an axe head. Then look at the same symbol in U.S. Congress. Same symbol. Very interesting. You know, the thing about symbols, Wyatt, is that they're so subjective and open to interpretation. Like if you would show a swastika to uh, a child these days, a middle school child, junior high child, they would probably associate it with uh, they probably associate it with Nazi Germany of World War II, right? But me, when I look at a swastika, I don't think of that at all. I think of paganism and what it meant back then. So it's very subjective how these things work. And uh, if I could offer a suggestion. If you want to learn about esoteric symbols, read this book. Next comment comes from Jason Howe, and they say, To be honest, people are always looking for the Savior. And when it is time to learn, it's a problem. Just give me the easiest route, or better still, do it for me, is the attitude of today's so-called society. Very well put, Jason Howe. I agree with that sentiment, definitely. And it definitely, from my perception and what I've seen, applies to that Stephen Temple individual. Um, for all intents and purposes, from all the evidence I've accumulated, that certainly seems to be the case. Well put, Jason. Well put. Thank you. Next comment comes from James Vigil, and they say, It's all Greek to me, but interesting. I recently watched your post on Masons. I was under the impression that Masons developed all this. Curious to know what your stance is on the Freemasons. Well, by all this, I have to think that James means quantum grammar, and I guess we can draw a correlation between that and also the claim that the late Colin David Eiffel Wynn Colin Miller made that he's a 92nd degree Mason because he syntaxed this book and rewrote it, quote unquote, replacing the missing words. And that is why he claimed 92nd degree. Whether that's true or not, I don't, I'm not one to say, okay? Uh, but I think that's what they're 
the congruency they're drawing there, meaning the Masons developed all this. Curious to know what your stance is on the Freemasons. I, I don't really have a stance on Freemasons, James, because they haven't trespassed upon me. The only time I take a stand is if I'm being threatened or trespassed upon. And that's when I hold a position with correct sentence structure for the ages of the vessel. Uh, to further expound on it, I think there's good and bad in all groups. doesn't matter if you're, uh, I don't know, a Mason, uh, a Christian, a Muslim, a Buddhist, a Jew, <laughs> uh, a gang member a Republican, a Democrat, a Green Party. I mean, there's just, I guess it's all, you know, perception. I know that I am not a Freemason, nor do I have a desire to be one. I have been approached in the past uh, with offers. Uh, but the thing is, is that I am not with the volition of placing the priority of the brotherhood or of a brotherhood above my own priorities above my family above my you know everything else i'm not in a position to do that uh we're not with the volition of doing that at all so no thank you next comment comes from the learner 1000 and they say dear jason these people are the ones that make the people practicing law fiction think that the people using correct sentence structure are nutcases. You have wasted your time. Now here we go. The Learner 1000 telling me what I've done. You've wasted your time with someone that seems by apparent behavior to lack the mental capacity to use quantum anything. The guy is a moron and this is current destination is no coincidence. Now. This is the reason why this comment was not published. Not because they violated the terms and conditions by telling me what I've done, but because they're name-calling. That is the lowest form of low-hanging fruit that there is. And that's a no-no on this channel. I mean, there are plenty of other places to go where you can call people idiots, morons, stupid, whatever you want. Plenty of other places. This is not one of them. This is a place of honor, grace, peace, neutrality, rule one, rule equal. We look at grammar and related performances. Not qualified, really, to make psychological assessments of someone's mental capacity. Okay? Even though, I'm, I'm actually defending Stephen Temple here. Even though Stephen Temple, uh, in a very roundabout, veiled, passive-aggressive way called me a moron by saying, by suggesting the possibility that I'm autistic, which I gave him props for. That was one of the, a very good diss. I mean, I, I got a chuckle out of it. It was very funny to me. Of course, I don't take anything personal, which is why I'm defending Stephen here, because this is not cool by any sense of the, by any stretch of the imagination. We do not name call on here. Name calling is for elementary school, okay? People with lack of accountability must be avoided. Also, my personal take on this particular case, there must be a systematic way to push these types of people away from quantum grammar because they are ruining it. That is not true, the Learner 1000. I don't know what your knowledge level is of correct sentence structure. Uh, from the way you're conducting yourself, I'd have to say it's very minimal or rudimentary at best, there is no way to ruin quantum grammar. Quantum grammar is quantum grammar. Okay? How you use it is up to you. How I use it is up to me. But no one can ruin it. It is what it is, and it will always be that way. They give leverage to people in the fiction world to mock and treat the rest of us as a joke. Conspiracy nuts, theirs. seriously. Take care. You're doing a great job. Thank you very much. Um, here's the thing. People like Stephen, they're not using correct grammar. They're using quantum gobbledygook. There are mistakes all over it. So therefore, 
It's basically using fiction against fiction. Okay? It's not the same as using correct sentence structure versus fiction. It's not. The sooner people realize that, the better I think they'll be able to comprehend the audit that I did on uh, Stephen's situation and his documents. Final comment comes from colon James hyphen Alexander colon Jennings and they say, wish you all the best, great channel, very helpful. Your channel has become a go-to source when I'm struggling to get closure. Look forward to your future content. Thank you very much, James Alexander Jennings. Consider a membership. Um, <clears throat> there are two tiers of membership. Loyalists and loyalist contributors. If you choose the second tier, you will have access to content not available to the public. So, ladies and gentlemen, here is the final word on the Stephen Temple situation. Hopefully, it's the final word. I know and I've been made aware by of other you know, friends or students that have told me that this Stephen fellow is creating hours upon hours upon hours upon hours of content um, talking about me. I have not watched any of it, and I'm not planning on watching any of it because it holds no value to me. The only value it has is that which you put into it. And for me, it has no value because I know the guy doesn't have closure on the grammar. I concentrate on the grammar. That's it. That's the only thing of value to me on this channel, on YouTube, in this capacity. So if he wants to make hours and hours of content um, having to do with me, if he wants to give me, you know, let me live rent free, uh, wants me to rent out space for free in his head, that's up to him. Whatever, you know, gets him through the day. The bottom line is I've broken bulk with any communication with the guy, blocked him from my channel, blocked him from my email. It's done. It's over. Um, it turned out the way it did. And that's how it goes. I'm very stringent and vigilant when it comes to to honoring those principles of honor, grace, peace, neutrality, rule one, rule equal, okay? When you consistently violate those terms and conditions, I'm not going to let you stay here, okay? As Uncle Chael Sonnen says, I'm not going to let you get close. It's just not going to happen. And bottom line, there's room for everybody out there. If you want to use your quantum gobbledygook and you wonder why you go to jail and you're getting beat up and stuff like that, it's up to you to figure it out, not me. I do what I do. I've been 100% successful with every single case that I've done. And I continue to be successful. I teach hundreds of people all over the earth this wonderful technology. Stephen will not be one of them. Unless, of course, he watches my YouTube channel, which is... You know, I can't stop him from doing that. I can't stop him from plagiarizing my material. I asked him not to, but I can't stop him. He's the one that's going to have to deal with that karmic debt, if you know what I mean. Thanks for watching, ladies and gentlemen. By the way, if you see that truck on fire right there, this was a picture that I took uh, near Chandler, Arizona, on the 101, I think it was. This car just... Boom! Burst into flames right there. And I thought it was very appropriate as to the main topic or periphery topic of this video. Thank you for watching the video, ladies and gentlemen. If you are interested in learning correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, if this is the year for you to commit to it, make a choice, this is the year I'm going to learn it and I'm going to gain autonomy and become my own authority. Hit me up at the email address below. I will schedule a 10 to 15 minute video consultation where you and I uh, will vet each other. You can ask me whatever you want and it costs nothing except your now space. We will meet on the geometric level playing field of video communication, share our correct names and find out if this is something you want to do. 
if you want to learn and get closure on it and if you are willing to do what it takes to do so hit me up at the email address as i mentioned before there are two tiers of membership hit the join button to find out more about that feel free to dig into my catalog um, beginners check out the mini class playlist um, there's a lot of good stuff there for the more advanced Go ahead and study the Parse playlist, the uh, Correct Sentence Structure playlist, and the Syntax playlist. There's also the the, uh, Quantum Grammar Shoot podcast playlist. Lots of stuff to keep you busy on here. My gift to you. Thank you very much, and I'll see you in the next one.